And I think we have a great uh, program. It's a Google Hangout webcast. Uh, first time that we're doing this uh, with uh, uh, the Morning News Star. We have Jim Brown and Lauren Shahardi with us. And we have some incredible news uh, that's breaking out of here in Louisiana. Uh, along with us is uh, Greg uh, Hilburn. Uh, why don't you tell us what's going on, Greg? And uh, and then we're going to chime in with some some questions. Tell us what's going on with the uh, the what I call the kissing Congressman McAllister uh, uh, drama. So the events of the day uh, clearly started this morning when the uh, Republican Party chairman of Louisiana, Roger Villery, um, uh, issued a statement uh, which was reported at the News Star this morning first that calling for Congressman McAllister's McAllister's resignation. Uh, later in the day, uh, uh, just recently, I uh, got communication from the governor's office uh, that the governor, too, was calling for the congressman's resignation, calling his actions an embarrassment, um, and that he should remind, should resign immediately. Uh, so th the events obviously have been unfolding since Monday. Uh, the congressman has said that he doesn't plan to resign. I last spoke with him yesterday. Uh, we, we still reiterated that he didn't plan to resign. Of course, uh, it's clear that the pressure is being put on uh, even even heavier now. Uh, so that, that's where we are at this point. Today, the congressman, I, I got a response from him uh, by text, but but he's kind of gone not you know he's gone dark uh, at least for me today. So that's that's where we are as of now. So let so let me get this straight, Greg. Uh, we've got a very colorful group of politicians over the years who have been accused of all types of philandering, dealing with prostitutes. We've got the reputation of Edward Edwards, all these things, and the congressman gets caught in a kiss, and all of a sudden. Uh, all of the folks that were against him when he first ran for office, the Republican Party establishment was all for his opponent, uh, Neil Reiser, the senator up your way. In fact, Neil represents my old senatorial district up in northeast Louisiana. And uh, we've got Bobby Jindal, whose entire campaign operation was against McAllister. Now they're just appalled by it all, and they're call for calling for his resignation. I don't mean to defend the congressman or condone anything he's did, but anybody who says there's not a lot of politics in play here is just not being realistic. I'm an out outsider, as are the other two fellows. I'd like you to kind of comment on that because, uh, uh, like I say, you've got all these folks in play, and there's a lot of agendas going on that go beyond just what the congressman did or did not do. Do you agree with that? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, uh, it's not really my place to agree or have your commentary, I can I can tell you what events that I see and have reported on, uh, whether or not I think there's a conspiracy, uh, as there are some theories out there, uh, as there were when, uh, when this race began, when Congressman Alexander resigned abruptly uh, in August. And so uh, I'll have to leave that up to others to speculate, but I can absolutely tell you that, uh, you know, as the, the events have unfolded, the accusations that have been made, uh, as with the congressman's Monroe district office manager, who a minister has accused of of uh, of, of leaking that video. Uh, so there, there's certainly a lot of storylines. Would, would, would you follow up on that real uh, quick? Uh, then uh, Lawrence uh, chime on in. But in, in terms, I mean, who leaked it? Uh, do you have any information? Obviously, you've been reporting on this uh, from the get go. Um, you know who 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 leaked it? Uh, the minister is uh, saying it was the office manager. Is there any are there any facts yet to actually, you know, uh, any admissions, anything like that? The office manager has not returned my calls. She, uh, the congressman's chief of staff, as well as the uh, building's owner. The congressman leases uh, office space uh, from Bill Land, an architect, said that there were only three people with access to that security camera. And that was the congressman's uh, district office manager, Leah Gordon, uh, Bill Land, the building owner, and his employee. Uh, although Miss Gordon has not returned my calls, Bill Land 
and his employee have gone on record with me as saying they would be glad if I would set up a polygraph test that they would take that test to clear their names. Okay. So that makes three. Uh, are there any other possible people out there? Uh, and, and also, uh, as I appreciate it, you know, whoever was there was shooting, was taking a, a, a camera and, and shooting the screen, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the security cameras, am I correct? Or the uh, I, that's my understanding. Now, the owner of the building, Bill Land, uh, t told me that the uh, Miss Gordon had been asking for frequent access lately to the, uh, the the security system is within a room, a locked room, and so she'd been asking frequently to go in. And uh, he said that it was uh, she had told him that they were having a problem with theft. Now, the, the congressman's chief of staff. And never mentioned to me that they were having any problem with theft, but that's that's uh, what I know from the landlord. Well, you know, right here on the screen we have three attorneys: uh, Jim Brown, Lawrence, myself. So we have a whole bunch of legal minds, and I, I I'm bewildered, uh, Lawrence. Well, let me let me begin by saying I think Jim hit it right the nail right on the head. Uh, all the hue and cry uh, about uh, Congressman McAllister uh, stepping down and resigning is basically coming from all the folks who didn't support him uh, during the last election. He was not the, the sanctioned candidate by the Republican Party. That's not the person uh, that they wanted. Uh, Senator Reiser was the candidate uh, that they wanted. And uh, now uh, those folks are calling on the congressman to step aside. Uh, it does take away, in my opinion, uh, some of the, uh, the, the sincerity of, of trying of, of, of the political party and other politicians uh, trying to say they want to see him do the right thing. Uh, I found it very ironic that even among Democrats that lost out in the primary uh, that they were calling for him to uh, to resign also, uh, which you would expect. I mean, after all, they lost to him in the election. Uh, whether or not the congressman decides to resign or not will certainly ultimately uh, be his be his decision, and and it should be a decision. Uh, that he and his family make, and he should try to see what the, what the people of that district want. Uh, you know whether or not that that act was egregious enough that they want to see him step aside or not should be their decision and not a bunch of politicians' decisions. You know, Steve, it's, it's uh, yeah. it seems like it almost ought to be reversed. Uh, Lawrence ought to be defending some action of a Jefferson Parish politician, <laughs> and, such and as such as to, to the. Uh, Redneck Bible Belt, and I don't mean disparagingly. I'm from there, and by the way, you guys don't even know this. I ran for that that fifth district congressional seat in 1978, lost by a handful of votes to the incumbent at the time, Jerry Huckabee. I've been all over that district, and it's a oh, it's a conservative. Quick, just a little offshoot. The biggest issue I had during my eight years as senator, as whether down in LaSalle Parish, part of the fifth district, whether they could have a high school dance. I put it on the ballot for the parish to vote on it. By five to one, they said, no dancing up in northeast Louisiana. So it shows you how conservative their area is up that way. So it's kind of ironic that Alexander, the former congressman, resigned and then took a job in Baton Rouge, a real quick election. All the wheeling and dealing going on in the 5th District, I'd pick any district in the state but the 5th District. Boy, it's sure the focus of not only the state of Louisiana, but the entire nation, NBC, CBS, Morning Joe this morning. So uh, it's got a lot of attention. Well, from no, from no dancing to a plenty of kissing. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm just wondering. Kind of, uh, skip the stuff in between. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, uh, let me ask you this, Lawrence, I mean, because Jim brought it up. And let's put some names uh, t together. Uh, talking about Jefferson Parish, where you are, where I am. And, uh, you know, one of the people who's a player here, of course, is Roger Villery, chairperson of the uh, Louisiana State Republican Party, a good friend of mine, a good friend of yours, somebody I really respect a lot. Um, and obviously, he's feeling a lot of pressure. Um, and then another, another person uh, from Justin Parish, um, somebody who uh, I don't agree with that much, uh, is David Vitter. Now, I got to tell you that. Uh, you know, I know that there are a lot of people are wondering why in the world are they are they blasting this guy for kissing when David Vitter was 
had admitted a, a horrible sin, a, a terrible sin, and the allegation, of course, was prostitution. It, you know, and 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 the Democrats have come out with a uh, an email saying, uh, "Hey, Republicans, we're really happy that you've gone ahead and you were, that you've requested David Vitter to resign." But of course, they were kidding. I'm just wondering. I mean. Doesn't this? I mean, isn't this the ultimate in hypocrisy? Well, it's also also the ultimate in politics, and that's what you see. Uh, it, it's all politics. Uh, you know, usually though, what you see is when a member of the opposite party uh, does something that's perceived to be egregious, that the opposing party will call for their resignation or a f big investigation or what have you. Uh, you're correct, uh, Steve. I mean, what uh, what Senator Vitta uh, confessed to is, was certainly more egregious uh, than what uh, Congressman uh, McAllister is seen on tape doing. Uh, so you know there is, the, you know, it's it's a double standard to a certain extent, and and uh, how how you answer that probably is best addressed to to those folks who who maybe were silent in the past uh, but are very vocal today. On the other hand, Steve, yeah, I think I'm going to say this. Uh, uh, there, was, there is a little difference. First of all, Vitter's uh, admittance was for something that happened four or five years earlier when it all came out. There was a pretty good time span in there. Now, it still was a huge problem for him that got huge play, but he very astutely ran against strictly Barack Obama in his reelection. Uh, Congressman Malalsal, the Democratic candidate, tried to make some hay out of it. And it just didn't go anywhere. So the time frame plays in favor of bidder number one. Uh, the second thing is, uh, you know, when you're caught on video like that, uh, I mean, you know, people might understand, well, it was just a peck on the cheek or maybe a little kiss on the lips. But if you look at the video that Greg has been playing up that way and all the – it just goes on and on and on and on. The, the video just so is so overwhelming that I think the emotions play up a lot more, and that maybe is the difference between the bitter situation and what's happening with McAllister. Well, yeah, but the issue is morality. I mean, that's a, that's my understanding in terms of the way that Roger Villery has uh, uh, has couched his letter uh, requesting, uh, urging resignation. You know, the outrage of the act. I mean, you know, you cannot, in my view at least, you cannot be so outraged about somebody's act for, you know, and whether it happened four years ago or two years ago, ten years ago, I mean, it became, it surfaced. And when it surfaced, that's, that's when it becomes an issue. Now, of course, you know, the voters decide, and that's what you're talking about.